Hello my friends. I haven't made a video lately on the aquaponics system and the reason for that is uh, recently I have had catastrophic failure with the aquaponics and the reason for that it's, it gets pretty complicated. Um, I have some neighbors that are dairy farmers and some of those dairy farmers have never taken a vacation and the reason is they have to milk the cows twice a day. Well with the aquaponics system you pretty much have to be married to it and uh, I go to Florida every year, half the year I'm in Florida. So I do that for health reasons and it's nice to be down there in the warm weather when it's tundra weather up here. But anyway um, to do the aquaponics, you got to have uh, your heart into it. And when I was leaving, I would get some of my neighbors to take care of the system. The first year that I left, everything went fine. The uh, neighbor was very much into gardening. He has a very good garden every year. And I taught him the system, the aquaponics system, and the only problem that he ran into was one of the pumps failed. He replaced the pump and there was no problem. The system worked perfect for him. Um, the second year that I left for the winter, I had two of my neighbors take care of the system to make it a little bit easier so one person hasn't, doesn't have to do all the work. Well, the two neighbors, they split the job up into one taking care of the fish, the other one taking care of the plants. Well, that was a bad concept because you have to know the entire system. So, um, a system doesn't just fail catastrophically from one problem. It usually happens with a whole series of failures happening in a sequence. And this is what happened. Um, the person that took care of the fish, all that he would do is uh, feed and make sure that everything looked okay, um, that the pumps were running, the air uh, circulating air pumps were running. The person that was taking care of the plants, on the other hand, was a very good gardener, and they both have very good hearts. You know, it's an awful lot to ask someone to do this, and they're not being paid, they're being paid by whatever produce or fish that they take out of the system. But they have to know the system inside and out. You have to be very familiar with how everything is going to work. And the uh, person that was doing the gardening, taking care of the plants, um, what would happen, well, first of all, since I'm running basically four different types of systems here, the uh, uh, flood and drain with the gravel bed, the towers that are being watered from overhead, and uh, the floating raft bed, and the fourth would be conventional, which would be the, uh, the wicking beds that I have. Well, with the uh, um, system, the way it's set up, everything is flowing into its sump tank. The sump tank is uh, the collection for everything. Um, that is still working, and it's been shut down for a year now. Um, the water level is still maintaining uh, right where it's supposed to be. If anything is evaporating or uh, leaking, it automatically refills. So that's not even being tended to or watched and it's still functioning. And you can hear the fan is still running. It's, it's all on automatic. I am growing conventional uh, plants uh, for this summer. That's what I was doing. I converted some of my gravel beds into just uh, soil. And uh, um, I'm in, right at the stage of converting everything back to the aquaponics system because I have an apprentice that her heart is 
into wanting to do this and she's just uh, very anxious to learn and so I'm going to set it up and uh, let her go and take the system through the winter and uh, th probably through the summer too to, to let her just uh, go crazy with it and she wants to make a living uh, doing this and for me it was just uh, supplemental for uh, organic foods for myself and whatever I was producing excess I would just give away. So um, we're going to convert the system back but let me go through what can happen with the system and what did happen with my system. First of all um, the person that was watering or taking care of the plants I have a hose that I can spray and uh, uh, something that she would do which uh, I did not explain this to her uh, like I said you have to be familiar with how the system works the gravel beds that uh, are flood and drain the water height level has to come about two inches from topping up and you want the top of the gravel to be dry so that you don't grow uh, moss or, or keep uh, moisture loving insects from living in there. So she would come in and everything would be dry so she would take the garden hose and give it a good watering even though it was functioning perfectly with the flood and drain. So there is the first error that was being made. She's adding excess water into the system and the water was getting onto the ground when she would water. Uh, the uh, grow towers, uh, they, all the tubes have to be checked periodically to make sure that none of them are plugged so that uh, all the roots are getting wet. And uh, that is not too big of a, a problem to check those, especially when I had all the, the drip tubes set so that you could just sight down each row and see each one functioning. Uh, you know, I went from having the, the tube, the drip tube inside the row tower to exterior so you could see it flowing. So it was a visual check, it was a spot check, you just walked down each row, you could see if any were plugged. And so the other thing that I had was I was uh, using, it's a, a, a CHOP2 system. I went to a second pump, but it's still functioning as a CHOP2 system. The second pump was elevated in my uh, sump tank so that I'm pulling water uh, from the uh, water that was coming in from my flood and drain beds. So this water was already uh, run through a filter system. The flood and drain bed was a filtering system. It took out a lot of the solids. And then when it would go to the sump tank, it went into a container that held the, the second pump. That second pump put the water up into the drip tubes. So this water was pretty clean. I had much less clogging because of that system. Um, the water that drained out of my flood and drain beds was going into that container. So it was filtered, it was up elevated, it was uh, just a, a foot or so below the surface of, in the sump tank. And the uh, sump tank pump itself, the main pump, sits on the bottom of the sump tank. Well, there's sediment uh, settling out of the water in the bottom of the sump tank. So this was picking up sediment. That's the water I did not want to run through the grow towers, but that water was pumped through the rest of the system. She was turning off the main water line that would come into the greenhouse when she would be done watering. So the automatic float was not able to work. So when it wasn't working, the water level eventually went lower and it went below that second pump. So the second pump stopped pumping water into the grow towers. When that happened, 
then when she would come in to water, she would water all the flood and drain beds, and then she soaked all the grow towers. She would water them down, and I had close to a uh, hundred grow towers. Um, so that was a lot of water that she was weighed, uh, sprinkling or spraying on these grow towers. She was soaking all the plants really good. <clears throat> And she did was doing a lot of work, even though it was a wrong thing to be doing. All that water that she sprayed then went down onto the ground, into the gravel of the greenhouse. The gravel is uh, under the greenhouse has a layer of plastic so that it would be a root barrier. All that water then would work its way to where the sump tank is in the ground. The sump tank is a large hole. It's six by six by ten so it holds about 3600 gallons of water it's also lined with rubber on the inside that lining is made to keep water from going through it well when she was watering and water got on the ground the groundwater went on the outside of the rubber lining which caused that lining to start collapsing and it collapsed to where it went around the main pump. When it went around the main pump, the pump couldn't pump the water anymore to uh, the entire system. So then it got to where the water wasn't going into the fish tanks. So the fish tanks were getting uh, stagnant. Uh, she would top it up with the garden hose to, or the, the other neighbor would top it up but it wasn't uh, pumping new water in. So with that, it was a total collapse of the entire system. Um, my uh, only recourse at that point was to shut the system down, assess the damage, and then uh, go through a rebuild. So uh, this is going to be the rebuild of a failed aquaponic system. Um, the system itself, I love it. It worked great. Uh, I was extremely impressed with uh, every component of the system. Uh, each type of the system worked uh, better for certain type of plants than others. So if you selected which type of plant is going to grow, grow into that particular type of a system, everything worked great. And it, it took me about two years to figure out what seemed to work the best, also to be able to identify the predators that would, you know, the insects or whatever, that can get into the system. So this is where we're at. We're right at the stage of a rebuild. Now I'm going to take the camera and walk through and show the horrible damage that is extremely embarrassing to me to even make this part of the video. Thanks for bearing with, with me here.